Redis, or Remote Dictionary Server, is an open source, in-memory, key-value data store used as a database, cache, and message broker. It is known for its high performance, simplicity, and wide usage across various applications that need real-time data processing. The key-value pair is the most fundamental data structure in Redis. Redis stores keys as strings, and the associated values can be various data types, but the simplest form is the string value. A key value pair allows for fast lookups and manipulation, ideal for caching and real time operations. The key is a string used to uniquely identify the data, like user colon 123. The value is the actual data being stored, which could be a simple string, binary data, or a more complex data structure. There's options like a bitmap, bit field, list, set, sorted set, geospatial, hyperlog, etc. Here is the most common use case of Redis. In a traditional system, Redis is often used as a caching layer to improve the performance of MySQL or other relational databases. The key reasons to use Redis in front of MySQL are 1. Speed. Redis operates entirely in memory, which means it can respond to read requests much faster than a disk-based database like MySQL. Number 2. Reduce load on the database. By caching frequently accessed data in Redis, you reduce the load on MySQL, improving the overall scalability and performance of the system. What is the concept of a cache hit or a cache miss? For a cache hit, when a client requests data, the system first checks if the data is available in the Redis or the cache. If it is, this is called a cache hit, and Redis quickly returns the data without querying MySQL. The second case is a cache miss. If the data is not in Redis, there is a cache miss, and the system then queries the MySQL database for the data. Once MySQL returns the result, the system stores this data in Redis for future requests, and then returns the result to the client. There is also a concept of cache expiration and eviction. To ensure that the data in Redis stays up to date, Redis supports expiration for keys. This way, if data is frequently updated in MySQL, the cache can expire old entries and refetch fresh data from MySQL. You can set up an expiration time on a Redis key, after which it will be automatically removed. For example, caching a user profile for 60 seconds. There's also eviction policies. Redis can automatically evict keys when it reaches its memory limit, based on policies like LRU, or least recently used, and LFU, or least frequently used, etc. How about Redis compared to MySQL for caching? For Redis, you have in-memory low latency access. It reduces load on MySQL by serving frequent read operations. The use case is that it's ideal for caching, session storage, leaderboards, and real-time data. MySQL is used for persistence. It's disk-based storage to ensure that data is not lost on server restart. It's ideal for relational data with complex queries, transactions, and relationships. And the use case is for long-term consistent storage with complex query requirements. Here is a single Redis instance or simple database. A single Redis instance operates as a simple standalone in-memory key value store. This setup is commonly used in smaller scale applications or as a caching layer. In this model, the Redis server manages all read and write operations. It holds all data in memory, providing very fast access times. It's high performance since everything is in memory and reads and writes are extremely fast. It's also very easy to set up and maintain for basic use cases. The disadvantages is that it does not provide fault tolerance. If the Redis instance crashes, all the data is lost, unless persistence mechanisms like snapshots or AOF are enabled. This setup can only scale vertically, for example, increasing resources like CPU and RAM, and not horizontally across multiple instances. How about Redis in a high availability setup with master-slave replication? To overcome the limitations of a single Redis instance, you can configure Redis in a high availability setup using master-slave replication. This setup includes a primary master instance and one or more secondary slave instances, which replicate data for the master. The master instance is the main Redis instance that handles all write operations. It stores the primary copy of the data. The slave instances are one or more secondary Redis instances that replicate the master's data. These are read-only copies of the database and can be used to offload read operations from the master. So how does this work? The slave instances continuously replicate data from the master. Whenever the master receives new data or write operations, it sends updates to its slaves. 
The master handles all write operations, while the slaves can handle read operations. This allows the system to scale by distributing read operations across multiple replicas. It supports failover. If the master goes down, one of the slaves can be promoted to master, usually handled by an external tool like Redis Sentinel, which we will discuss later. Now let's look at Redis with master-slave replication and Redis Sentinel for automatic failover. To add fault tolerance and automatic failover to a master-slave replication setup, you can use Redis Sentinel. Sentinel monitors your Redis instances and automatically promotes a slave to a master in case of a master failure. Sentinel constantly monitors the master and slave instances to check their health. If the master goes down, Sentinel detects the failure. If the master is unreachable, Sentinel promotes one of the slaves to be the new master. Sentinel also informs Redis clients about the new master so they can automatically connect to the new master instance. So this works in four steps. Step one is that a cluster of Redis Sentinel nodes monitors the health of the master and slave instances. Step two, if the master goes down, Sentinel initiates a failover. Step three is slave promotion in which the Sentinel elects one of the slaves as the new master. And step four is reconfiguration in which the clients are informed of the new master and the other slaves are reconfigured to replicate from the new master. What are the advantages? Redis Sentinel ensures that the system remains available even if the master goes down. Slave instances can still handle read operations during normal operation. And adding new slave instances is straightforward, allowing for scalable read throughput. The disadvantages include eventual consistency and more complexity. As in the master-slave setup, there can still be replication lag or eventual consistency. And configuring and maintaining Redis Sentinels adds additional complexity to the system. There are two additional points I want to mention. The first point is about failure detection. If the master becomes unavailable, each Sentinel node detects it via a ping timeout. A Sentinel node does not act alone. It requires the majority of the Sentinel nodes, usually called a quorum, to agree that the master is down. This prevents false positives due to temporary network issues. The second point has to do with old master recovery. If the old master comes back online after the failover, it no longer acts as the master. Instead, it automatically is reconfigured as a slave of the new master. In conclusion, Redis Sentinel, with master-slave replication, provides a robust, highly available and scalable Redis architecture. It ensures that failures of the master node do not result in downtime and that the system can automatically recover by promoting a slave to master and reconfiguring the remaining nodes.